edition of the News Feed. We'll tell you more about an important health resource you might not know about, why one student group says it's important to get tested. Plus, Housing and Residence Life prepares to welcome some new RAs. We'll have a behind the scenes look at the selection process. And the Fashion and Merchandising School prepares for its annual fashion show, why the program is ranked amongst the best in the world. Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of the News Feed. I'm Connor Real. And I'm Maddie Gordon. And now we turn to an important issue on college campuses, STD testing. News Feed reporter Carmen Lodato has more. Shippert Health Center provides free HIV testing on the second and fourth Friday of the, every month, and results are completely confidential. HEAT, the Health Education Awareness Team, is a group of students who hold programs and workshops to educate students on many health issues including safer sex. They encourage students to get tested for STDs regularly. Um, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that you can often have an STD without displaying any symptoms. So you could have an STD and be spreading it around to other people and never even know about it. Um, and so if you get tested you know, every, pretty regularly, um, then you'll know before you spread it on to further partners. The HEAT team and Shippert provide pamphlets with information on various STDs and testing. STD testing is available for men at Shippert and for women at the women's clinic inside Shippert. Prices may vary test to test. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Carmen. The Columbus Blue Jackets have activated forward Brandon Gibbons off injured reserve. They have assigned him to their American Hockey League affiliate in Springfield, Massachusetts. 26-year-old Gibbons has five assists in 21 games with the Blue Jackets this season. He's missed the last 23 games with a knee injury. He was signed as a free agent last summer after scoring five goals with 12 assists in 41 games with Pittsburgh last season. Dano made his NHL debut October 9th at Buffalo. He has had one goal and an assist in eight games with Columbus this season. Every year, Housing and Residence Life at Virginia Tech reviews hundreds of applications from potential resident advisors. The university devotes an entire weekend to selecting its next group of RAs. Maddie Gordon has more on the process. The job of a resident advisor is not one that can be translated into hours worked per week, says Tech's Housing and Residence Life website. Resident advisors serve as a peer leader and oversee dozens of students living in their residence halls. But RAs often become more than their job description. They can foster community, help students get involved, or just be a shoulder to lean on. Because of this, nearly 300 people apply to be an RA every year. For RA hopeful Kristen Kurdzil, her reason for applying is more personal. I'm a military kid, so I moved around a lot. And moving around a lot, you kind of get used to like some sort of loneliness, or like you kind of feel alone a lot when you're first moving around. And so I kind of knew or know how it feels to be alone. And I would, I, I'd like to try my best to stop that from happening to anyone else. Because Virginia Tech receives more than 300 applications for only seven RA spots, Kristen has about a one in five chance of getting the job. The entire application process includes four steps. The first is a comprehensive essay portion along with three interviews, an informal, a formal, and a group interview. The candidates are expected to dress in professional attire. Kristen has been offered a spot in the interview weekend where formal and group interviews will take place. The interview process takes place over one weekend at the Smith Career Center on Virginia Tech's campus. The process can be quite stressful, but Kristen is hoping the challenge pays off. I'm really looking forward to building a community with the girls in my hall. With selection weekend over, all Kristen and the other candidates can do now is wait. They will know whether they've been selected by the first week of March. Reporting for the Newsfeed, I'm Eddie Gordon. Thanks, Maddie. We wish Kristen and the other RA candidates luck while they await a decision. The House kills a bill aimed at protecting gay and transgender public employees from discrimination at work. That announcement comes despite a 2013 poll showing nearly 75% of Virginians support workplace protections. The bill narrowly passed the Senate last week, but has now been tabled by a House subcommittee. Governor McAuliffe signed an executive order banning workplace discrimination against LGBT state employees. The bill would have made that ban permanent and extended protections to all public employees in the Commonwealth. Just ahead on the news feed, how the School of Fashion and Merchandising is preparing its students to enter the world's fashion world before graduation. That's the 
story and more after this break. So good to see you guys. <laughs> so, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea where it goes. <laughs> well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Was it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back to the news feed. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield announced that the company is offering impacted consumers free credit monitoring and identity theft protection services following a historic data breach that recently compromised their personal and health data. The services are being offered at no charge for two years. Enrollment details are available at anthemfacts.com. Anthem says they expect very high demand for these protection services. Regal Cinemas in Christiansburg is looking to join the growing number of theaters across the country that sell alcohol. Regal is the only movie theater in Christiansburg, and the theater recently submitted an application for a beer and wine license from the Virginia Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. A notice appeared on the front door of the facility, which is required before the license can be approved. The announcement has raised both excitement and concern within the community. While some people support alcohol in the theater, others are against it. Individuals like Virginia Tech student Carolyn Vickers think it depends on the rating of the movie. They're, um, depending on the movie and the rating, I think definitely should have an effect on it. Um, f for example, if it's a G-rated movie or even a PJ movie, then you probably shouldn't have people sitting around drinking wine and beer, and they shouldn't be, have the access to alcohol. An investigation into the company is required before the license can be obtained. As of now, the theater is still waiting to hear whether or not they have passed the inspection and earned a license. The application comes as the Cinnabowl and Grill prepares to open in nearby Blacksburg. The new IMAX-equipped theater will be able to sell alcoholic beverages. The museum that houses the National Toy Hall of Fame is establishing a World Video Game Hall of Fame. A representative from the Strong Museum in Rochester says the video hall will recognize electronic games of all types, arcade, console, computer, handheld, and mobile. The Toy Hall of Fame will provide the model for the video version. Anyone will be able to nominate a video game, and internal advisory committee will choose the finalists. An inter international selection committee of experts will choose inductees from there based on four criteria. Icon status, longevity, geographical reach, and influence. Nomination for the inaugural class are being accepted through the end of March. The Strong has been preserving and collecting video games and artifacts for years through its International Center of, for, history, for the History of Electronic Games. The engineering program at Virginia Tech is not the only department at the university that is top-notch. The fashion and merchandising school is ranked number 15 in the world. The department uses hands-on techniques, study abroad opportunities, and events such as fashion shows to create a higher learning environment for its students to learn the best way possible. I do think the fashion program at Virginia Tech gets overlooked because we're an engineering school and because we, um, the school is itself more focuses on the STEM area of things. The department is hosting a fashion show on April 30th. All of the pieces featured in the fashion show will be made by Virginia Tech students. The Fashion and Merchandising School has become a very recognizable program that the university can be proud of. That will wrap up this edition of the News Feed. If you have a story idea for the News Feed, let us know. Send us an email at thenewsfeed.nrv at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Connor Real. And I'm Maddie Gordon.